and welcome to another episode of the Asian Seller Podcast. I'm your host, Meghla Bhardwaj, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about freelancers. Yes, when you're an Amazon seller, at some point in your business, you will need to use freelancers or an agency or outsource some of the processes in your business just to keep things normal and keep yourself sane. <laughs> and um, to talk about all of this, I have with me Kamaljeet Singh from uh, Canada. Hi, Kamaljeet. How are you doing? Hi, Migla. I'm doing very well. How about you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining us today. So I'm super excited about our topic for today. We haven't talked about this um, on our podcast previously. So very interested to learn all about what you're going to share uh, with us. You know, you're going to be talking about some best practices to hire freelancers and agencies and also some of the mistakes that people make. So before we get into the content, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? How did you get into Amazon in the first place? And what kind of services or how do you help Amazon sellers? Sure. So uh, I started selling uh, on Amazon in 2015. So I was kind of doing retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, uh, did some wholesale for quite some time, then ended up doing private, private labels. So I did that for a while and I recently sold my uh, Amazon brand. And I'm doing full-time, you know, my full focus is on the MZ One Step, which is my agency. And we help Amazon sellers with uh, product photography, uh, enhancement content, listing optimization, uh, PPC management or account management and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's that's kind of my story. And I've been doing, uh, you know, meet, local meetups in Canada. So probably about uh, six cities now. I started from Edmonton. I was organizing just a smaller group of, you know, meetups and now... We have our meetup groups in six different cities. Um, so that's how it kind of all started. People were asking me, hey, do you know any good graphic designer? Or, hey, do you know any good uh, uh, copywriter? You know, people were asking me every meetup. I'm like, it's kind of an opportunity there to start an agency and, you know, help them out under my banner. So that's how it all started. Okay, that's interesting. So you also have some employees in Asia, right? In Pakistan, I believe. Is that correct? So can you tell us a little bit about the setup of your company? So we're a team of 27 people and we have our main office is in Edmonton, Alberta, uh, Canada. Uh, we're seven of us here in Edmonton office. We have uh, 20 people in Karachi, Pakistan. So we're a group of uh, graphic designers, copywriters, social media. You know, people are handling social media for our company, content creators and stuff like that. So, yeah, we're growing at a pretty, you know, pretty decent speed. Awesome. Great. So, okay, let's dive into the topic for today, um, freelancers. So first of all, I want to ask you, when should Amazon sellers start thinking about outsourcing certain processes in their business? Now, I would say, you know, as soon as your product research phase is over, uh, if your budget allows, you can start outsourcing your work. Uh, but it really depends, you know, as a beginner, you don't have that much money. Uh, if you're, but if there is budget, you can start right after the product research. If not, then once your product is um, arriving at the Amazon warehouse, you know that is the time to get your listing done or product photography done, and a bunch of other things set up. So that's is that is a perfect time to outsource your, uh, you know, outsource your things. Uh, and I see some some sellers they outsource pretty too soon, which is product research. So I would highly recommend not to outsource your product research phase because that is something. Uh, at first, you want to, you know, get get the taste off. You should know how, you know, the market works and what's the profitable products. And basically, it's the it's the uh, one of the basic rules that of Amazon selling. So do not, I would say, do not research. You know, do not outsource your product research. Uh, other things, you know, you can outsource as soon as possible if your budget allows. So even when a seller is starting out, do you think they should start outsourcing? Uh, you know, the products. Let's say it's my first product. I've just done my product research and launching the product. Do you think it's okay to, uh, you know, outsource certain uh, aspects, or is it good for me to go through the entire process myself at least once to get a better mm -hmm. understanding of how each aspect uh, works and what the, you know, challenges are? I would say the, uh, as I mentioned, the product research I would do it on on my own first, and you know how to deal with the suppliers, you know. Uh, how to sh get the shipping done from China or India to Amazon warehouse. Uh, even if you're outsourcing, you know, stay in touch with the with the person you're outsourcing to, so that you get aware of the process. Um, if you are, then you know, feel free to outsource it. Uh, I would say it's, you know, if you have time and money, you know, it's based on 
it's totally your decision when you want to outsource it. But me personally, I would do the product research on my own. I would deal with the suppliers first on my own. Once I know how it works, then I can you know outsource for my future products. As far as the listing, as far as the listing and product photography is concerned, they are totally brand new, you know, different skills. So you don't want to mess with that. So you can, even though it's the first product or your second one, outsource your product photography, copywriting, or you know, graphic design because that's what you are not specialized in. Okay, that makes sense. So, of all the different aspects that Amazon sellers need to deal with, which of the specific tasks can and should be outsourced? Uh, you can do graphic design. You can outsource graphic design, copywriting, product photography. If you are not familiar with the Amazon PPC, you can outsource that. Have someone get an expert to manage your PPC campaigns, right? So these are a bunch of things which should be outsourced, but but you know, in in this digital space now, you can pretty much outsource anything. But these four things are the must that you don't you don't want to you know uh, take risk with because a bad copywriting or bad photos or or bad PPC can hurt you in you know in the revenue part of your business. Okay, so the four things you mentioned are photos, copy, PPC, and what was the fourth one? Oh, uh, like it's graphic design. Graphic design, which which is kind of similar to photos, yeah. you could say. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And then um, there are also different types of, uh, you know, there are freelancers and there are agencies and there are virtual assistants. So can you tell us a little bit about the pros and cons of working with freelancers versus agencies? And, you know, what about virtual assistants? Are they different from freelancers? Are they the same? And some people also have their own employees in places like the Philippines. You know, what are the pros and cons of the different approaches? Yeah. So um, if you have any uh, smaller task or one-time gig, I would go with the freelancer. If you have some ongoing tasks or, or, or a bigger project, I would go with the agencies. So that's where I choose from. Uh, if, for example, if you have like 10 listings to do, it might be a little bit too much for a freelancer when an agency can easily handle those 10 listings for you. And, uh, you know, if we talk about the pros on the freelancing, freelancers, you know, they can do a lot of good things at a cheaper price and they can work at the odd hours as well for you. And they are really uh, good at one specialized skill. So in this kind of, you know, in this kind of situation, I would always go with the freelancer and they are perfect for smaller projects or a short term projects. On the other side, Agencies, you know, they can, they have the multiple skill sets. They can meet the deadlines. If you have a strict deadline, agencies can meet that. And they have a strict SOPs on the other side. And their availability on the freelancers is sometimes they're not available because they might have a little bit too much of work, you know, getting from the other clients or personal availabilities. They might have personal reasons they're not available. But on the other side, agencies, they're always available. If they promise something, you know, they're going to deliver that within the time. Uh, but the cons on the agencies is it can be a little bit expensive. Uh, so just because, you know, uh, they're working with a bigger volume of work. So this is how, you know, if you have bigger work, go with the agencies. If you're, if you have one time or smaller gigs, go with the, go with the freelancer. Okay. That makes sense. And then what about having your own employees in, you know, a location like, maybe Pakistan, India, or the Philippines? That's a good one. You know, once you, uh, once you get to that point, if you're, because if you're if employees, if they do not have any specialized skill set, if he's a graphic designer, he's good at graphic design. If he's a copywriter, you know, he's a good copywriter. When you're hiring a virtual assistant or a virtual employee, uh, then you kind of, you know, get a general person to do that job at a cheaper price, $5 an hour or $6 an hour in India, Pakistan, or Philippines. Uh, that person is good for, if you teach him, if he knows how to do the PPC, or if you teach him how to do PPC, manage clients or data entry jobs, or just deal with the returns and everything. So for the, which are not highly skilled, those things can be you know easily done by the virtual assistants. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. And then let's say hiring freelancers, like what are some of the things or some of the criteria that we should consider, you know, while hiring freelancers? 
Okay, so, uh, you know, when we're hiring any freelancer or any agency, I would always ask for their portfolio, you know, ask them to show you what they have done in the past, or if you're hiring them on Upwork or Fiverr or any other platform, ask for, you know, check their reviews, what kind of reviews they're getting, and what's, if, the, if they have any testimonials to show you, ask that. And other thing I would say, if you have time, take some time out to do a video call or a video interview them, ask them some, you know, sporting questions. For example, um, if you're at, if you're hiring them for a PPC management, ask them some basic questions like what's the minimum A cost you have achieved, achieved in the past, stuff like that. Right. So these kind of questions on the video call can really help you out if the candidate you're hiring for is the right person or not, because if you're, if you're asking these questions by email or by messages, you know, they can make up some stories as well. So I would say, you know, if you have time, uh, have 10 to 15 minutes of video interview, that way you'll really find, you know, that way you know what are the exact skill sets that, you know, uh, that person has. Mm -hmm. Right. And then what are some of the websites that you recommend for people to go find, uh, you know, these freelancers? There's uh, Upwork, FreeUp, like any website that you recommend? Yeah, if you're if you're in the Amazon space, I would highly recommend freeup.com. Uh, mm -hmm. um, the reason why, because they, they have already done the pre-screening, they, they do the uh, interview phase and they kind of choose out of thousands of uh, candidates, they only find one of the top ones and then you can hire them, especially for the Amazon. If it's something outside Amazon, Upwork is also a really good good place to find freelancers. Um, so these are the two ones I would recommend. Uh, free up Upwork, you know, if you can't find someone there. Uh, Fiverr is also good for one-time gigs or smaller smaller projects. Fiverr is also a good one. But okay. free up is, is, is the main one that I have had been using in the past. Okay. And so most freelancers, I guess, are from the Philippines and increasingly I'm seeing more freelancers from Pakistan, India, and other countries as well. So what are some of the pros and cons of these different countries? And do you see um, certain countries specializing in a certain type of skill set? Yes, yeah, so um, it really depends what kind of work you're outsourcing. Uh, for example, if the work is not based on any, if, if it's independent of any location, then I would say focus on uh, the quality of the freelancer rather than the location. For example, if you're outsourcing a product photography, you want to have someone in North America so that you can have uh, the North American lifestyle images or you can have American models in it. Um, for, for something like a data entry job or a graphic design, then it doesn't really matter where, you know, where you're outsourcing because all it needs is a computer. So for me, my personal experience is, you know, uh, it, if, if you're checking the portfolio, if you have a uh, strong SOP, or if you have uh, a nice interview process, it doesn't really matter where, you know, where your uh, freelancer is, as long as they know their job, you know, you can hire them anywhere. Uh, so my personal experience, you know, Philippines had been a really nice place where, you know, uh, uh, you, you can outsource a lot of work just because they have a good call center and other experiences. So they, it's kind of a culture there to work with the American clients or North American clients. Uh, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter as long as you know what you're, who you're hiring. Mm, right. And then in terms of cost, is there a difference between, let's say, freelancers in the Philippines or India or Pakistan? Like, which is, uh, which location is lower cost and which is higher? I think Pakistan is quite, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's quite on the lower end, uh, but it doesn't, it, it's not the huge difference than the USA or Canada. It's all range between $4 an hour to $6 an hour. Anything more than that, uh, you can probably, you're better off hiring someone in USA or Canada or UK. Okay. So that's the average rate, 4 to $6 per hour. And that's in the Philippines as well, or is that mostly in Philippines? Is, is, yeah, Philippines is a little bit higher, like 7 to $8 uh, an hour. But if you negotiate well, they, they can bring the price down to 5 I have seen virtual assistant being hired at $5 an hour or $6 an hour in Philippines. Okay. So is it better to hire them on a monthly, um, 
you know, retainer or a kind of a salary or is it better to do it on an hourly basis? If you know that how much work you're going to give to the freelancer, um, if you have a specific amount of work every single month, I would go with the salary based because you know what to expect every month. And if you don't know how much work, reoccurring work you have in the upcoming month, I would say start with an hourly base because you're not sure how much work you have for them in the next month. So you, you don't want to commit, you know, uh, commit yourself for, for a budget that you can't afford. So if you know how, if you have uh, consistent sales coming in, if you have consistent work, go with the monthly fees. If not, go with the hourly. That's kind of how, how I see it. Okay, that makes sense. And then how, how do you ensure quality and especially, you know, consistent quality, whether you're working with a freelancer or an agency? Um, and is it easier to manage qual- quality, um, you know, with an agency as compared to freelancers? Yeah, so that's where agencies uh, come into the play. Uh, if you're looking for something consistent, you know, same quality every every time you hire a person, agencies, they have really, real strong SOPs. So go with the agencies if you're looking for consistent work, just because the freelancers, they have some busy period of, you know, period of the year. Sometimes they have the personal reasons. So they might not, you know, have the same quality of work. So agencies, if in, in, in this situation, agencies are much more, you know, uh, much more better if you're looking for consistent quality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And then I guess it's really important uh, to define the SOPs very, very clearly when you're working with freelancers, right? So can you talk a little bit about that and you know, how to define SOPs for which specific tasks are they more critical? Yeah, it, it's, it's probably going to take a lot of time at first when you're creating your SOPs, but once you do your life, you know, it's, it's going to get a lot easier. Um, at first, when you're not too sure uh, how to create an SOP, watch some videos or, or reverse engineer uh, what, what, what other successful sellers are doing and just reverse engineer them, have everything mentioned step by step so that it's super easy for the freelancer or any virtual assistant who's working for you so that you can have a bare minimum communication after you hire them. Otherwise they'll start, they'll be bothering you every single day. um, What needs to be done at what point. So that kind of gets, you know, very insufficient. Um, So yeah, have some, you can, best way is to find the best sellers or best listings in your listing and then just reverse engineer them or have someone create an SOP for you, you know, hire an Amazon expert who knows how things work. So yes, so it, it's going to take a little bit of time to create an SOP, but once once you have the SOPs in place, it's going to be much more easier and you can, that kind of answers your first question as well. And you can have the consistent quality, even with the freelancers, when they know what exactly they will be doing day after day or work after work. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And then do uh, freelancers, and especially uh, freelancers in the Philippines, do they like just strictly follow SOPs and you know, don't make any of their own, um, you know, thought out choices or decisions? I mean, is it, is it sometimes like that? Like they just follow what you've told them. And even if, you know, something's not working, they will just continue to, you know, follow the SOPs and say, Hey, you told me to do that. That's what I'm doing. Have you experienced that? Yeah. So that's where uh, the mixture of KPIs and SOPs come in. Mm-hmm. So you just don't want to give them the SOPs, give them the KPIs as well, have them fill out uh, the important metrics. If you see numbers going in red, that means it's time to rethink what they are doing or have a meeting with them. Maybe there's something in your SOP which is wrong. And on the other side, uh, it also depends on what work they're doing. For example, if it's a graphic design or copywriting, that's where their creativity comes in. You don't want to have your SOP and kill their creativity. Give them their, you know, give them their time and let's see what they come up with. And if you're hiring someone on a PPC or account management or data entry kind of work, then you want to have strictly follow them your SOP. But wherever there is a creativity, you don't want to mess with with their creativity just because you have an SOP. So it's kind of a mixture of both KPI, creativity, and SOP. So it's you need kind of need to balance out that. Okay. Okay. That's good advice. 
So what are some of the mistakes that you see people making when they work with freelancers? Yeah, there's a lot of them. Um, the first one is, you know, they're always, uh, you know, they don't give themselves a good amount of time. You know, their their shipment is arriving to Amazon FBA in two days, and that's when they're looking for a copywriter, or that's when they're looking for a photographer. It's not a lot of time. So you want to give yourself a lot of time, even though when you're sourcing a product or when you're getting your shipping done, make sure you have enough time to post a job you have enough information in the job posting, you have enough time to interview people. And you know, even though the, if the job is not done right at the first time, and you have time to get the things revised and make it perfect before you're launching the product. So that is the number one mistake sellers do. They think that it will be done in the next three to four days and it's gonna be awesome, but it's not always the case. Things take time, so give yourself extra, you know, extra amount of time. And the other thing sellers do is, you know, they, they're always looking for cheaper rates. Their first question is always, hey, how much it's going to cost me? It shouldn't be that. It should be, hey, how can your services help me out? Something like that. Price is very important, but you always get what you pay for. So, uh, so don't always try to go for the cheaper options. If someone can charge a little bit more and provide an extra value, I would go with that one because that's going to... Uh, help you in the longer run. I have seen many sellers, they get their things done and then they don't like it. And after one month, they're hiring someone again to get the things fixed and then do the interview process right. It's, it's going to take a little bit of your time at first, but I'm pretty sure if you do your inter interview process right, you will find good freelancers or good agencies. And yeah, just give them their time. Do not just uh, do do not be impatient, even though if you don't get the results right, have your SOPs back them up, give them the feedback, because it's not always how you think. It's it's about, you know, for example, in my business, like we do product photography or graphic design, you know, it's creativity is really subjective. It might look good to you and it might not look good to someone else. So do not be impatient always work with the freelancers, give them the feedback, have proper communication, uh, do not just reply them whenever you want, uh, have a nice communication before before the start of the project and have a real expectations, set up, set up deadlines, ask as many questions as possible. And I'm, I'm sure if you do that, you'll get some good results in the end. Okay. Okay, that was some very good advice, Kabulji. Thank you so much for all of that. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about uh, your agency and, and the services that you offer um, for Amazon sellers? Yeah, so uh, what we do, we do listing optimization. Uh, we write product title, bullet points, description. We do enhanced brand content, which is also known as A plus for everyone. So that's what we do. We do product photography. If you're anywhere in the world, all you need to do is just ship, ship us ship us out one product sample in Canada. We'll do the product photography here. If you need models, we have the uh, university models available. Uh, yeah, so we manage PPC. We have uh, uh, five PPC experts in Karachi, Pakistan. They can, they can manage your PPC. They can manage your account. If you need any virtual assistance, let, let us know, you know, get in touch and we'll help you out. Okay, and you also do a bit of Photoshopping. I was watching your interview with uh, Paulina on LinkedIn, and uh, I think uh, your fo your Photoshop is photoshopping skills were pretty impressive. And <laughs> she was looking at some of the the photographs I think on your website, and yeah. uh, right, is that one of the things that you specialize in? And <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of that's one of the you know uh, our one of our best skills. Okay. Um, we kind of specialize in that just because it's winter, everything is covered in snow, so there is no outdoor outdoor shoots happening. So it's a magic of Photoshop that we can make any photo look real. So yeah, so we, that interview, you know, we wanted to talk about all of our services, but ended up, he was so impressed with the Photoshop and our whole interview, you know, went on the Photoshop topic. Yeah, I was watching that interview and it was pretty fascinating. So guys uh, listening, you know, go to LinkedIn, search for Paulina Masson and, uh, watch this interview that she did with Kamaljeet. It's, it's pretty interesting. They go over some of the 
images that uh, Kamaljeet's team has photoshopped and they look so real. <laughs> There's this tablecloth that uh, I saw and, and it doesn't look like it's photoshopped. It looks like it's really on the table. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> and I think there was a no, posture right. corrector as well that these two people were wearing. And that also looked like so real. It didn't look photoshopped. So pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are some of our best ones. If you look at the lighting, the shadows and everything, you know, the guys, they just know what to do. They know their job well. So Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so how can people reach you? Um, you know, your website or email address or what's the best way? Okay, so yeah, you can go to our website. It's amzonestep.com or just send me an email at kamal at amzonestep.com or info at amzonestep.com. So someone will be, you know, in touch with you uh, within, within 24 hours. Cool. And do you have any offers that you can offer um, all of our podcast listeners? Any discounts yeah. or special offers? <laughs> yeah. So if you mention about the Asian seller, you'll get 15% off on all our services. Ooh, that's cool. 15% off on all services if, if you mention the Asian seller. Fantastic. That's right, yeah. Cool. Okay, Kamal, thank you so much for uh, talking with me today. It's been a pleasure and um, I'll see you around. Thanks, uh, thanks, Megla. Thanks for having me. It's it's an absolutely you know honor to be on your show. Thank you so much. And all of you guys listening, if you aren't already following us on Facebook, go ahead and search for the Asian Seller on Facebook. Join our Facebook group. We're also on Meetup. We do host uh, Meetup in Singapore uh, quite often. So join us on Meetup.com. And um, we also have a group on Telegram. Just go to the AsianSeller.com and uh, look for all of the various social media channels where um, we have a presence and join us there. All right. Thank you so much, Kamal. Bye-bye.